All right, so the purpose of this video is to walk a brand newbie to the topic of relational databases through why we use them, uh, how they work, and the advantages of relational databases. These have been in use for decades uh, and decades uh, because they work. They help us make sure that we uh, ensure data integrity and high quality. So let's walk through an example. I'm going to start here with this unorganized data. This is uh, dummy data here for a fake company called Gold Star, and it's a list of employees. So this is an HR database. So we have pretend social security numbers, names, salaries, gender, some performance rating given by a supervisor where they work out of, uh, including then their position title, their, uh, this is their not, not their actual education, but the education required for that position. And then we have the minimum and maximum salary for that position. So as you take a look at this, you'll notice there's three distinct types of data. There's information about the person. And in here, each record is unique. Each person is listed once. Then we have information here about where they work, including the location. Now, because we have more than one person working at a particular office, notice we have uh, although Tracy uh, Adams and Jennifer, or sorry, Jennifer Adams and Tracy, Tracy Coulter, their individual records listed once, because they both work out of the same office, we had to repeat all the office information for the Atlanta office. So the first thing you see here is that we've repeated some data, and uh, data, although less so these days, uh, data is expensive. It takes up space, uh, requires cost to maintain uh, access to and keep updated and keep uh, uh, available. And so we don't like that. Furthermore, take a look over here. So we've got information about the person, about this, the office, and then we have position about the title that that employee holds. So this person's a trainee. This person's also a trainee. So just like with the location, we have data being repeated. So why exactly is this a problem? I can give you a few examples here with these questions. What if I want to give a pay increase to the employee with a social security number of this right here, 109-87-6543? All right, so I can design a system to look uh, or a program that will access this data and I can have a lookup field that says find employee 109876543. All right, that doesn't seem so hard until I come over and I find out that I've got, okay, it's Harold Foster. But the system actually comes back and says, um, no, it's not just Harold Foster, it's also Emily Wood. I have two people with the same social security number. All right, how did that happen? Well, I don't know, maybe when someone was entering in some information they either made a typo or uh, there could be a number of reasons but we've got a problem now with two people with the same social security number that needs to be fixed okay we'll solve that with a good relational database management system the idea of a RMDBS relational database management system is that I can set a certain key or a certain field like social security number to be an index or a key and with an index every value has to be or with a key excuse me every value has to be unique here in Excel it doesn't care it doesn't know that social security number is a key all it knows is that it's a column and I can put whatever values I want but in a good relational database management system it will give me an error if I try to enter in a social security number twice or the same one for two different records okay that seems pretty straightforward but that doesn't explain the problem of data redundancy so let's take a look at this one what is Harold Foster's current salary all right, so I search for Harold Foster, and I find him right here, and I look it up, and I say, okay, a salary is, oh, 5TT00. Again, some sort of data entry problem, and Excel doesn't care what I enter here. It'll let me put in anything, although I could add some rules, uh, data, under the data tab here, some validation rules that require that only numbers be entered here. Uh, a good relational database management system will... Um, We'll, we'll do the same thing or do that even better. Okay, so I get that it ensures uh, that I've got the right data types, that I've got no duplicates. But how about this problem? Which number do I call to get in touch with the Boston office? Okay, not a problem. I scan through here. I can see here's the Boston office and here's our phone number. Perfect. So I run a query or I run a search from some program I create that says pull up uh, the phone number where location city equals Boston and it says great here you go 617-123-4444 problem is I have another here where it says Boston with a different phone number well, how did that happen well maybe they've got two phone numbers or maybe they updated their phone number and the data entry clerk when they went to update it 
they didn't realize that Boston was going to be listed multiple times and they just grabbed the record for the one person that they knew lived in Boston or two of them and updated the number in two places. Well, now we have a data consistency problem uh, where it's different across multiple records. How would we solve that problem? It was easy to understand over here. We just need to put in some constraints that say, don't allow two of the same uh, numbers to be entered. Don't allow text to be entered in numeric field. But how do we make sure that if I change a number for one location in Boston, that it's automatically updated for anybody else who works in Boston? We're going to come back to that problem in just a second. The rest of these are similar. So what if Jose Rodriguez leaves the company and his record is deleted? What problems might this cause? OK, let's find Jose. Here he is. So we delete him. OK. Well, if I delete this record, not only does that delete Jose, but also deletes the New York office. Well, that's not a problem because I've got New York right here, too. So I'm not getting rid of the New York office altogether. However, if I come over here, Jose is the only regular manager or re sorry, regional manager. Well, that does create a problem because as soon as I delete his record, there's no such thing as a regional manager anymore in our system. So we've got to separate out these three types of data, data about the person, the location, and the position, into three separate and distinct tables. All right, so here's what that looks like. What we do is we say, okay, let's move all the records that are about the person to one table, about the location to another, about the position to another. Here's what's interesting. Now I have location city listed only once. Okay. The nice thing there is if I have that problem or that situation right here where I say, what number do I call to get in touch with the Boston office? Let's say Boston updated their number. I come here, I change it in one place. Now there's no issue with potentially having two different numbers because I have to update it in multiple places. Same thing if Jose Rodriguez leaves. Here he is right here. We delete just those fields, just those cells, but the record for regional manager remains. It's in a separate table. It doesn't get deleted just because I delete this record over here. Okay, well, that probably makes sense to you, but then your next question might be, well, how do I know what location Jennifer Adams works in and what her title is? That's the purpose of these cells right here. We create what's called primary keys and foreign keys. Now, we'll worry in the next chapter about how we decide or understand which tables get the primary keys and which tables get the foreign keys. However, for now, just take a look at this. We can pretty we can figure out fairly easily that Jennifer Adams, her location ID is one. All I have to do is go over to the location table and find the one with the primary key of one. So now I know that Jennifer Adams works in Atlanta and there's her information. Same thing here with position ID. She has a position ID of four. I find the primary key in the position table. That means she's a trainee there's her position ID. So we separate the data and we call this process normalizing or normalization. We separate the data so that there's no more redundancy. I can list each of these records once. And notice this also takes up much less space, less data overall on this sheet than on this sheet where it's all repeated. So normalization one, it makes sure that we eliminate redundancy and reduce the likelihood that we'll have inconsistencies. But two, it makes our databases smaller, which means faster, which means more efficient. For the most part, there's some exceptions, but we'll, we won't worry about those for now. Anyway, uh, so the way it works is we assign a primary key to tables where there's going to be one record on this side relating to many records in another table. And in the other table where there's going to be many records, we simply copy that key over and we call it a foreign key. So it's a primary key here because it originates from this table. But notice Atlanta, location number one, can be listed many times over here for each employee in Atlanta. So we call it a foreign key over here. And this number always needs to match up over here. Another advantage of a relational database management system is that we can enforce integrity constraints, which means I can't create a new employee with a location ID that doesn't already exist in this table. So if I try to come over here and add a location ID of nine, I should get an error that says, sorry, there's no such thing. The advantage of that now is that we don't have, again, data inconsistencies or errors in our data. So what I have to do then is create the location first before I create Jennifer Adams, or that can be handled programmatically in the rules behind the, 
um, that we uh, in program uh, programming rules. Anyway. So let's go back to our other questions that we had over here, and you can see now how much easier it is to answer them. So what if Dave Webster transfers to the Chicago office? What problems might this cause? All right, so my guess is uh, Dave Webster, where is he at? Right here. He's in Salt Lake. He transfers to Chicago. All right, no problems with other people in Chicago, but he's the only one in Salt Lake. So the problem here is we delete Salt Lake. But now over here, we can simply come into Dave Webster and say his location ID is now number three. And I can still have Salt Lake City here. It hasn't been deleted. It, it remains, so I don't lose that data. Awesome. So take a look at the rest of these questions if you want to, and you can see how dividing it up into normalized data, uh, excuse me, separating data out into separate tables that are related through a series of primary keys and foreign keys is better for ensuring the integrity of the data and speeding up and uh, minimizing the size of the database.